Hi, in this video we'll be using what we learned in a previous video, Sophos UTM9 port forwarding, to allow traffic from the internet into our locally hosted FTP server. To get started, open your favorite web browser. Go to your firewall's web admin interface and log in. Next we'll need to go to the NAT section which can be found under Network Protection. Then click the NAT tab and click to add a new NAT rule. The first thing we'll need to change is our traffic from, which we'll want to be Internet IPv4. So we'll click the folder and we'll drag over Internet IPv4. We want going to to be our external WAN address, so we'll drag that over. Now we'll need to add some network and service definitions to complete this NAT rule. The first thing we'll do is to add the ports that we need for our secure FTP server. So we'll click the plus next to using service. Give it a name, and we'll start with our control channel. The type can be left at TCP. Our destination port is 990 and our source port can be left at all possible port numbers. We'll click Save. Then we'll need to add our media ports. So we'll go ahead and click the plus again, give it a name. Type of definition can stay at TCP, and this time for our destination port we're going to input a range of ports instead of just a single one. So we'll start with 50,000, and then we'll enter a colon, and then we'll end at 51,000 and click Save. Now we have both of our service definitions, but we'd have to add two NAT rules if we just listed them separately. So what we'll do to prevent that and to clean up our list of NAT rules is to combine our two service definitions into a service group. So we'll click plus again, give it a name, and this time we'll change the type to group. Click the folder, we'll filter, and we'll drag over our control and media. Then we can close the sidebar and click save. So now our condition section is complete and we'll have to change the action section. We'll want to change the destination to our secure FTP server. So we'll have to go ahead and create a record for that. So we'll click the plus button, give it a name, and we'll enter that server's IP address. Then we'll click save. We'll check the box to create an automatic firewall rule. And under advanced, we'll want to check the box to log initial packets so we can see this traffic in our firewall log. Then we'll click save. Once we verify that all the settings are correct, we can click the switch to enable the rule. And that's all there is to it. Now anyone on the internet can access our secure FTP server. So what if you wanted to make it a little bit more secure? Say we don't want everyone on the internet to be able to access it, only us at a remote office. And we know what that office's IP address is. Well, let's edit our rule. We'll go ahead and turn off automatic firewall rules, click save, and then we'll go over to the firewall section. We'll create a new firewall rule, and sources will need to add one that has the public IP address of the remote office that we'll be working from. Change the type to host. And just for the purposes of this demo, I'll just enter a private IP, but again, this is where you would put the public internet IP address of the remote office that you'll be connecting from. And click Save. Under Services, we'll click the folder, and we already have set up this nice service group, so we'll filter for that. Close the sidebar. And under Destinations, we'll click our folder and select our server. And close the sidebar. Our action is Allow, and under Advanced, we want to log traffic and click Save. 
then enable the rule. And now we've locked down the connection so that only our remote office can access the server. If you have any questions and would like to open a paid support case, our contact information is in the video description. Thanks for watching and have a great day.